in the penguin it's very clear that it's what it's been a week it's been a week that boy yeah. batman yeah two, two years yeah. Two years in real time since the movie of the Batman, because it was, yeah. uh, and then, yeah, and then one week from the events of the Batman, and it, and yeah. they did a s- smart job. I mean, what I really liked, to your point about how they t- took different approaches, uh, one, one, one element of that, to me, was I, if you never, if you didn't watch the Batman, they did a great job of summing up really the the. the the key moments and of the end of, of that movie um, in the first few minutes of, of the penguin. And also just for us as view, as me, cause I haven't watched, I haven't watched the Batman in a while. So it, it, it reminded me of like, I mean, I remember the flood and all that stuff, but you know, I have forgotten that it was a realtor to set it off the bombs and stuff. So it you was like, a, I forgot that I did. I really oh. did. It's been a long time. Like I said, I think I've only watched the Batman also once in the theater and you know, maybe once afterwards, and I haven't watched it since. I've only watched it once in theaters. Yeah. But I remember that. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah like yeah. a clear, critical yeah. point. I didn't, I mean, yeah, I remember, memory is a weird thing because I feel as though um, in this first episode, After Hours, they did a good job of very quickly, as you put it, reminding you jogging your memory of the critical events and i i wouldn't i would also say the critical events pertaining to how do you set up a series or show season involving the penguin so it's like Mm -hmm. things that happened at the end of the batman that really will impact the penguin and the world he's living in um and and so it's been a week since the death of Carmine Falcone. And um, this leads to a a conversation with uh, between between Al and Penguin. But um, <laughs> before we get into the events of this episode, um, yeah. Will, why don't you just share your overall thoughts? Overall thoughts, as I touched on earlier, um, definitely think it, it did a good job of just and, and and really to piggyback on your thought it really harnessed why we should care about this character and and his backstory and and why he was so interesting um you know because i, I did li- you know i was listening to the uh, the official podcast of of the, the penguin and they they noted that oz only had six scenes in the movie um and and so he with with the way they framed this show and what happened you know and 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 then to your point how now because of carmine being gone um the power vacuum opening up it opens the door to like really giving us an exploration of this character and especially whenever we first you know, we, whenever we get those early intense minutes with him, that conversation between him and, and Al. Uh, so I, I really just, really just enjoyed just from the minute I was just from the get, I was just engrossed into in this world again. Uh, and also just the groundedness of it. I mean, just seeing things like the FEMA, you know, just seeing like the FEMA disaster recovery uh, centers and stuff. It just, you know, Yes, this you know. Yes, this is a comic book world that we're in, but it, it really not only did it set up the you know penguin as a character, but it just reminded us as Gotham as a character as well, and 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 it really just a very grounded grounded world that we're that we're living in in in, in this iteration of of the Bat Universe. Yeah, I I would agree that this this first episode. Um, it was it was pretty. A it was captivating just because of Colin Farrell's performance. Um, yeah. yeah, we. I mean, put aside makeup and all of that, just his mannerisms, and he owns the entire episode. Um, this is the Penguin, and we literally follow him throughout mm-hmm. the entire episode, which is so such a. Um, you would think that would be such a more common thing, but it's really not because yeah. especially in this day and age where we have 
we have way more ensembles. Mm -hmm. This really isn't an ensemble, okay? I would I would argue, based solely on the first episode, this is not an ensemble. This is Colin Farrell owning, mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> owning just, just because. Because I would also say his performance and mm -hmm. what he's able to bring out of his fellow actors and actresses um, lifts up the story itself because yeah. we, I mean we've we've all seen this before um, it definitely plays homage to and and somebody said breaking bad no 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 this isn't breaking bad okay breaking bad is watching a good person slowly over time become evil mm -hmm. this is an homage to classic gangster movies yep. and tv yep. like it's you i mean from from the opening scene where he talks about what power is we've heard people we've heard mobsters talk mm -hmm. like characters say that and you're like mm -hmm. yes I mean, this is Godfather. Come yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's yeah. just, and I think because they did that in such a, because between that and just his performance, that's where the nuance was. Mm -hmm. Um, that I was I was hoping for. Mm -hmm. Now I wish I wish some other things could be a bit more nuanced, but we'll get there. Um. So overall, I was really satisfied with this episode, um, and and I'm curious about the next one and just to see where things are going to go, um, and and just to really um, just watch Colin Farrell earn his uh, first Emmy. So <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> I mean, he's got to at least be nominated. He's okay? got to be nominated. He's not yes. Do not pull a Viserys, okay? I'm still, that's why we could care less about the Emmys these days because Viserys got robbed. <laughs> Patty was exactly. robbed. Patty I don't understand robbed. that. Oh my God. Um, so, so this power vacuum, which is interesting because I was like, okay, yeah, we have a mobster kingpin die at the end of the Batman. So of course now everybody's like a power vacuum. It's, it's interesting how it didn't feel like a power vacuum no. in this episode. No. no, because you're literally watching Oz make a decision and purely, and, and you knew it. The moment Al laughed, you're like, mm -hmm. oh, you're dead. You're dead. dead. Like, yep. like we, it, it's a weird thing because to an extent, some of us viewers, already know this character so we already have this idea of like if oz had not shot al we would probably be like okay what what are they doing with the penguin like this isn't the penguin we know like no yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he does and then the whole episode is how do you find your way out of this because you know and so we're watching that chess I don't know if it's chess because I don't yeah. really know who to an extent, but we're just watching him scramble and come up with a plan and, um, and being able to maneuver himself out of um, being caught in this situation, yeah. which I personally thought the ring was going to do it, but they, they did a smart thing with that. They did. They did. Yeah. I mean, I think to your, yeah. I mean, I think that's the thing. It's like, because as soon as I'll poke fun of him, uh, and, and he, you know, he and and, and, and Oz reacted in instinctively, and mm -hmm. I think, and and I think that's you know, and you're, you're right. I mean, you know, because the penguin is such a well-established character, you know, we we know what we know where the we know what the, what we know the end game as far as the story. Whenever what's penguin is the character we know. But this is like, how do how do we get to that place? It's sort of like even like with the like with the Batman, you know, the movie itself was like a, you know it's like I guess year two of, of of Bruce's journey as the Batman, and so you know we had a very emo Batman. It's not like 
he's he's still refining and becoming the world's greatest detective. And so in this show, we're seeing how Penguin becomes the mass, you know, the, the boss of Gotham's underworld in this show. And and you're right. I mean, how they just sort of structured that at the, at the outset, uh, right out right out of the gate. You know, there was they're like we're we're going to jump right into this story. You know, so that you know, so Al. You know, poor Joel Maisel was gone in the first, you know, five, 10 minutes or whatever. <laughs> it took me a while to figure out. Like, I know that face. I know that voice. Yeah. What, yeah. what did you, um, what do you think of Victor? So, I, I, Victor, um, you know, I've, I, I, I've seen this out there and I agree. Uh, this is Penguin's version of his Robin. Um, and and so but sort of just how yeah but um but you know but it's sort of how victor falls into into this situation because you know penguins at the iceberg lounge and you know these kids are just you know again taking advantage of the situation because again we're just a week from the from the from the flood and 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 so you know he's at the you know he's at the, tr- the true proverbial wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> and, yeah, and, uh, yeah. Did, and, and, did you recognize the actor? I did not. Okay. Did we talk about? Did we talk? Did we watch and talk about the show The Runaways? Do you remember that show? I remember. I did not watch it. You did. I did. Yeah. What? I that remember. doesn't seem right. <laughs> Yeah, you watched it. I think with our yeah, with I think you were I think you had watched it with um some other, I think prior to me joining the podcast or or came around the same or maybe around the same time. Maybe around the same time because it, yeah. it was from 2017 to 2019. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, because he because he he played a character on that. Um, okay. I just I don't know. I could I had to look at IMDb for it, but. Okay. I I was I was watching and I'm like your face looks so familiar I cannot mm-hmm. put my finger on it um, I just I don't think like to go back to everything I was just saying about Carl and Farrell um, we we don't know enough about Victor we haven't seen enough from Victor it was very clear that okay you need to establish someone who is able, like, Colin Farrell or Oz can talk to throughout this episode, so we just don't get 20 minutes of him staring off into the distance, clearly thinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to come up with a voice. Yeah. So, so, so why not? And, and yeah, like, Robin, I even put that in my notes, but also just... Someone who it makes sense and mm-hmm. you understand why. I mean, you understand why just not necessarily, I think more so from your your basic understanding of who Penguin is yeah. um, than, than anything else. So right. and, and, yep. and I, think, I think the actor um, is hopefully going to learn a lot from Colin. Um, and I'm just, I'm, I'm interested to see if, the, if, um, if they're able, first of all, if he'll survive this season. Yeah, that was what I was about to say, because, I mean, every moment, I mean, I will say, as far as his, uh, the actor who plays Victor, his portrayal, he, he, he brought the right element of fear of, like, is this going to be the moment, you know, like, I think about the, the moment when they're in the, in the, uh, you know when when Oz tells him to look at the sunrise, and um, you know is this the moment that he gets you know that he that he caps this kid? Um, oh, he was gonna live the whole time. Yeah, yeah, but 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 I think the point. Is, but I know it's gonna. Uh, you, to your you're, you're right. I mean, Oz needed that 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 person to play off of. Yeah. But but I think they still did a good job of keeping the tension there throughout the episode of is this kid going to make it or not. At least for me, at least at least for yeah. me, it did. Yeah, yeah, it it didn't for me. Um, mm. I I, in a weird way, I, as soon as Al dies, um, I didn't really have too much tension going on in the show. Mm. 
I just, I mean, this is the first episode. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't know. There, there wasn't a whole lot of stakes. It was fascinating watching, figuring out the plan and seeing the yeah. plan. But tension, I don't, I didn't really have a, a sense of tension, even though there was like two scene fight sequences and all of that stuff. But yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, I didn't. I didn't really get a lot of of tension. Um, it, yeah. Even even with Sophia. Um, yeah. And and so, writing wise, I'm I'm very interested for them to flesh out more of that what happened um, because mm. we know mm. we learn that she is. Freshly released from Markham, yep. Penguin did not know. We also learn that Penguin clearly had something to do with her being sent to Arkham, and mm -hmm. she knows it. Yep. And and there's somewhat, I don't know. I see. I sense the not flirting, but a little bit of like, okay, we used to hook up at one point. So yeah. I don't. I don't know. And. There's also, um, she quickly figures out um, that that he somewhat is involved with the disappearance of her brother. Mm -hmm. And um, because he uses this idea of this new drug that Al told him about, um, and as his as his bargaining chip to retain, his uh, block. I don't. I yeah. don't know what they called it. Yeah, but, the drop. Yeah, then they call yeah, it drops. Drop. To retain that. Retain yeah. that. Um. So and I I do I do appreciate that they they bring out Sophia and she appears to be formidable. Mm -hmm. I will say something. Yeah. I was not overly impressed with this actress. I've seen her in other <laughs> things, mm. but the way. I just thought it was one note the entire time. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, you're okay. You're getting a lot of screen time, and I'm seeing the same person. Like there, there wasn't. It was. It's just like let me just stare, like dead eye stare at you, yeah. and kind of mumble, but also just talk really. F I don't know. Like, I get what she was doing, but. It also felt one out to me. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. I mean, I, I, it was. I mean, I thought she. It was. I mean, she did a great job, but it was. But it was very one dimensional at this point. Like you know, I'm the hangman. I'm just out of Arkham, and and um, I know whenever they had the torture scene there with 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 Oz, um, you know, she did get a little bit more menacing, um, but. Um, but yeah, but the, the scene in the restaurant, whenever they were, whenever she was sorting out what, and, and reading between the lines and figuring out that he was, he did have something to do with Al's disappearance. Um, yeah, I mean, I think one of the most of the thing I got conveyed from that, from that scene was just the history, and and also I was just thinking, oh, we're gonna get some, we're gonna get some, we're gonna get some flashbacks with 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 the two of them, and and probably Carmine as well just to sort of flesh out what that history is there mm. well, well we'll see we'll see yeah. i in a way i hope we don't yeah i yeah. i just i i don't know the flashbacks they can be an easy crutch yeah well i know john tuturo is playing you know he's stepping in for um uh, who played who played Carmine in the movie? I can't remember who, but he but Carmine is going to show up in in the series at some point. Great. Well, so, yeah. I was or maybe or maybe or maybe it'll just be with with Sal Maroney and and I Carmine. Was gonna say, I was yeah. going to say like, I mean, I I would I would be okay more so with flashbacks about those two and yeah. and what happened there and how um how uh carmine even got a hold of sal's ring that mm -hmm. is a very um important piece yeah. um, that gets moved around from al to oz and then ultimately to sal in the end um who's in prison also did we know that sal was going to be um played by clancy brown 
Um, no, I didn't know that. I, or if I, I yeah. First of all, love it, and also yep. love the fact that I did not know. <laughs> Same here. I was like, <laughs> I was like oh, oh, when he showed up, I was like, oh, yeah. all right then. <laughs> you know, I, thank you. <laughs> it's, it's a welcome surprise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very very good and i also appreciate that he immediately is like penguin you're full of shit yep. um only for for them then to for oz to use the ring which i mean that ring the whole time i was like dude you brought it back to your house you put it like in your nightstand they're gonna find that like three episodes later <laughs> 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 so I'm glad that they were very aware of that and managed yep. to use that to help further convince Sal um, to, or not even convince them, but more to to uh, to realign, to make a, a new alliance. So at the end of the day, Penguin comes out clean, um, yep. no matter which side, and ultimately starts a. Um, starts the mob war again between these mm -hmm. two riv rivalry families. Yep. Um, so, so yeah. And, and at the end of it, it's just Oz and Vic enjoying some mixed flavored um, slush puppies. Yeah. Yeah. And Dolly Parton. <laughs> Nine to five. I love that. That was, a, that was just like, a, a, just whatever that ending, I was just like, yeah, that, that, that was, I was like, yeah, uh, I, I, I'm, I am in, in for the ride. And also, too, I know we hadn't talked about Oz and his, his relationship with his mother and, you know, I guess with her dementia and stuff. But, uh, you know, there's, again, just, you know, how how all, you know, the fact that he went by there during the episode, um, seeing the relationship that he has with her, they went in a direction with it that I, that I wasn't anticipating. So I was like, um so yeah, so you know, so. again, huh? How so? You said that it went in a direction you weren't anticipating. How so? Um, he he, it was almost it was um, he was a very caretaker esque role of 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 it, where you know he wanted to make sure she had she had what she needed and making sure that she was safe. Um, instead of it, instead of it being a jacked up kind of relationship between the two of them even though yeah so uh, right but, right like yeah. like i i they presented initially that kind of dynamic and then they also um showed that um she's definitely his his mom <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> definitely his mom yep. um and it's and she she probably passed down some traits that weren't the best. <laughs> so, <Yep. laughs> for sure. So for sure. I like I I I think they did a good job of showing both sides of that dynamic because what what the writers are doing right now is carefully crafting a non like at the end of the day, this is Penguin, this is his show. Mm -hmm. So he technically speaking, technically speaking, is our hero. Yeah. We want him to succeed. Mm -hmm. Even though he is a villain in the Batman universe. Like, yeah. so it's not anti-hero. No. But it's also not, you can't, you can't, we can't have someone be the vocal point who's, has no sympathetic or empathetic Qualities. I mean, and that's right. another reason why you have to have a character like Vic, who mm -hmm. some a kid who is like doesn't know what to do, lost his home, clearly mm -hmm. trying to get by and just needs a chance. Like, like you, you, you can root for someone who's willing to take someone like that on and help him out. Yeah. Um, so, so again they're doing a very good job and this all goes back to what i was saying before about the homages to like classic gangster mobsters movies i mean yep. in yep. real life those are not the heroes but yep. for purposes of story they make pretty interesting heroes in a weird way <laughs> yeah yeah they do i mean why do you think goodfellas and the good yeah. and, and 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 the sopranos and you know 
The Untouchables, all those films. I mean, Al- why Al Capone is still such a cult hero today, to this day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Loyalty, family, all of that. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, um, I'm, I'm very satisfied with this start. Um, yeah. Overall, yeah. very Me well too. done. Me too. And yeah. and yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, I mean, because like to your point, you know, to make it. You know, he's not a hero. He's not an anti-hero, but also they're doing, they're paving, they're, they're they're laying the st- the groundwork to show why the penguin is one of Batman's arch enemies, toughest enemies in his rogues gallery too. Especially with the story with like how with with the using that ring, for example, and how he you know came up with the plan to get these families to fight again. It shows like it's just showing that that uh, you know where this guy's going and, and why Batman why he's such a formidable formidable enemy against Bat for Batman. Right, right. Well, on that note, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Will M Polk W I L L M P O L K. And you can find me there too at SJ Belmont, S J B L M O N T. Please follow our crew there at Scene and Nerd. Friend us at Facebook. Follow us on Instagram and threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, Geek Out. You're welcome. Hey.